Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm going to show you quick now what we got on the on the bench today and this is a little kit you can buy off eBay. This is based around an LM1875 chip which is not a bad little uh, chip really you can, when you consider the size of it and you consider the few components that you need to make this work in a relatively well fashion. So what we got today then is we got it hooked up and we've got our input coming in. This does take a negative and a positive supply, meaning that we got a zero in the middle and we're swinging negative and swinging positive on the rails there. And at the moment, I've set mine up to 17 volts. And the reason why I've done it 17 volts is because if you have a 12 volt transformer, which gives you 12, zero, 12, you can run this then on that or if you have another transformer that will quite happily give you a 25 volts either side which is what they sort of recommend you can go up to 60 but this setup doesn't really like it but you can actually go up to 30 volts a side in the specs we're going to see it's 25 25 now let me just show you the specs there let me just bring this across here and you'll see here what we got is up to 30 watts output power um, low distortion 0.0 uh, 0 0.015, 1 kilohertz, 20 watts, wide power bandwidth, 70 kilohertz, and we can see the wide supply range, here we are, is 16 volts to 40 volts, high current capability, 4 amps. So, it's, uh, like it says, it's a 20 watt audio um, power amplifier on one channel. Now, if we were to look at the screen quick, just very briefly, you're going to see where I've already been playing around with this and you can see there's a whole bunch of numbers up there. But if we're going to do it again now, from the start, I'm going to start running this screen. I can just back that off one time. I'm going to use my little music player here. This is a uh, it's a high-V, high-res thing. It's got you know, a pretty, pretty low distortion rate on it. I'll put the thing up very quick on the screen there. All right, and yeah, pause, take a peek at that if you wish. But it's a pretty pretty low uh, distortion, and I'm using actually here these uh, one kilohertz with a 0.1 reference on it, and this is from John Audio Tech's channel, which is very good of him to make these available for us. And I'm now going to put the power supply on and run this oscilloscope. So let's put it on. We've got two channels going over there, as you can see, and I'm now going to click go on the scope. And you're going to see that we've not really got a great deal going on there because we don't have any real volume on here. And I've actually got to press play as well. So if I press play there, you see a little bit of noise coming up there. And I'm going to go and start going up on this volume. I'm going to go all the way up to where I see it about to clip. And we will see it as it gets clipping. It gets quite nasty quite quickly. And there we go. Okay, uh, it's slightly rounded on the top, so I'm going to just back that off. I'm just going to back that down like that. And we can see here, if we look across here, and we'll put our measurements on. We can see we've got a, uh, this is our four and a half. This is the 0.1%. And we're down at minus 64.9. Let's just say 65 on that. This is a um, three kilohertz. And we are at minus 71. And this is a second, secondary two kilohertz, um, even harmonic there. And we're at minus 73. And this, of course, is our, is our main um, one kilohertz sign. Now that's coming in at minus 4.26764 dB. Whole bunch of stuff there. But as you can see, look, this is all very, very low. Minus 90s, you know, minus 100. All right. And that's at that voltage now you can see over here it says 8.8 .8 volts this is on the acrms so if i just grab hold of the calculator i'm going to bring that into view and we go 8.8 .8, and we're going to square that and then we're going to divide it by the 8 ohm resistor i'm using as a load and that gives us 9.68 watts and that's using that would be using a 12 volt ac um, transformer and then once you've rectified it you know you time that 12 volts by uh, 1.414 and you get yourself pretty much 
just under the 17 volts. Okay, so that's what we get with our 17 volts. So let's just um, start upping the power on that. I'm just gonna turn this down low while I do that. This is on a loop, so it's just looping round and round and round. I'm just gonna turn that voltage down while I turn this voltage up on here. So, oh, let me get it to a reasonable rate of knots. So we can go to 18, 20, 21, 25. Okay, that's 27. So it reckons 25. All right, so we got that there and we can see up on the screen there that we're doing okay. So we just start taking that up. And you can see already um, our fundamental. We got our fundamental, of course, here. And we got that uh, provided by us by John. I'm gonna keep going up there till we get to where we're clipping. And that we can see a bunch of distortion coming through. All right, we haven't quite got that yet. Let me just adjust this over here. I'm just going to go down and slightly and adjust this to, uh, I don't know if I put it to 5 volt, you might want to stick that in the middle somewhere. If I start going up here. Oh. That's it, we've got a 5 volt. And I'm going to keep going up. We're in 90 now. Uh, now we're clipping. So my little... We're on 90 now on here, and as we can see from here, if we start using our cursor, I just want it to go on to free. Come back here, cursor. We can see here we got a minus 61 dB on that. We got a little bit either side with minus 83, minus 72, minus 68, and this is the 0 0.1. If I were just to click down off that just a couple of times, bring that down to more suitable, back down to where we were before was 83, I think it was. We'd see then we got minus 64, minus 74, and minus 73 there. And we would be minus 4.25 again. If I take that up, uh, just try and get as close as I can to the zero point, which is not really, I don't know if that is because it's there already. I think that might already be on it now. <laughs> um, I can't seem to, no, the minus two, sorry, minus, minus two, minus one, minus naught seven. Uh, there we go. So I've got that on minus 0.2. And there we've got minus 60 there for our um, 0 .0 0.01 um, pilot. And a uh, minus 69 there and a minus 67 there. So you're not even going to hear these anyway. So you can see, you can see quite further down here when it comes to looking for uh, distortion. We can see over the side here, we've got 13.3. 13 okay, so we'll go with that. And on the power supply there, it looks like we can actually pull out, just trying to see if there's much difference between that and the third harmonic. There isn't, and this is still the, the difference here. We could actually put this on this and take this from our 4.5 and drop this down onto here and we got a difference of 7.97 dB between those two and that's our secondary harmonic. Um, we got a difference of 9.5 dB between the peak of our for the peak of our pilot and our third harmonic there which yep yeah, and a 5.7 dB there, just sat on the top. 7.65, sorry, sat on the top. Okay, so 13.3 is what we're going to use. I'm now just going to stop this for a moment, because that's one of the nice things I do like about this, is you can stop that. You can turn off the power to things and um, still take your calculations. Okay, so I'm just going to put that down. 
and we've got 13.3 so let's bring back in our, our calculator and we shall look at this so we can see the first one there with 8.8 .8 squared it divided by the eight times we've got 9.68 watts and now we've got 13.3 squared divided by our eight times and that gives us 22.1125 watts of power which is you know um, within spec that is within spec now very quickly we're going to jump across to the other way of measuring this and that's using the um, audio analyzing suite okay guys we've got the audio analyzing suite open uh, we're going to look for a thd and we're going to be going from the range of 10 hertz 30 ki 30 kilohertz and we are going to be looking, uh, let's say, at our 10 watts to start off with. Just very quickly, and then we'll go up to the, to the next number. Okay, so let's just power this back on again. Still at 25 watts there. Um, oh, made a slight boo-boo. Let's just slow this down a little bit. We've got, we've got to do something else before we can do this. Okay, so we got a slight little setup change, and now we're using the uh, the waveform generator from the uh, Analog Discovery 2. Um, we're still using the same scope lead, of course. We're going to turn on the power. Okay, and now we are going to run. Uh, we're going from 10 to 30 kilohertz, 10 hertz to 30 kilohertz. Uh, steps 50 averages one. We can just leave it on there. We're doing the THD, and um, we're just going to run that at 10 watts, which is our level at 10 watts here, as you can see. And you can see the power going up on the power supply there, so it shows it does the lower, um, the lower uh, frequency. So now we're below the 0 0.1, 0, uh, 0 0.06, 0 0.05, 0 0.04. It's nice, we're sticking up that, tracking it around there. 0 0.05. And on the data sheet, it actually says 0 0.01. But that's at 20 watts, I believe, which is what we're going to do next. I just wanted to look at it, what it was going to be like on the 10 watts. So let's have a little look over this, just see what was happening there. We're at 13 hertz, so we go up to 0 0.1. And here is our 20 kilohertz, pretty much. Um, it's just not telling us that at the end, but that is a 20 kilohertz line. You can see that written down here as well. Uh, just over so you know it sort of stays on track there okay now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bump that up to 20 so now we're on 20 watts at 8 ohms uh, THD again and we're going to run that straight away I'm going to do a quick little hand check on the dummy load that's fine that would be okay you can see what the current it draws as it's pulling those lower frequencies Now we're at 16 hertz, now we're at 20 hertz, and we're at 0.1. Sorry, I should keep saying 0 0.0. 45 hertz, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.04. As we go up that. Okay, it's going across 0.05. Sticking at 0 0.05, which is quite nice. Nice bit of linearity. And that's how you say it. 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.08. Oh. We went up to a 0 0.2 there. Then we jump across there, and you can see that was a little bit, a bit, uh, bit ringy at the end, but we were up into 10% distortion. And we are at 21. Uh, kilohertz which is we want to be down below that 
that's the highest we can go to really on this is 20 that's what it so it gives us our um our data sheet for so let's have a little look at the um the frequency response going across that and if i put this at round about i don't know three line level um 300 milli millivolts um, RMS. Let's have a little look at what that is. Just channel one again. Okay, from the lower frequencies, of course, it's just building up, and now we're on 20 hertz, which is where we're calculating from. And it seems to be. Pretty bang on, all the way through there. So let's uh, go to our 20 hertz. That's where we finish off at 20 hertz here. Yeah, just under 21 hertz. Um, and that's good enough. I mean, that's that's nice. That's pretty much a nice flat response. Couldn't really ask for better than that, particularly. Uh, let's just do a a power. So we're going to go from one watt to um, 100 watts and just see where we get to. Now I, you know, this is only uh, good up to sort of 20 watts. Well, we'll see where we get to anyway on this. We see before clipping, we get to 22 watts when we measure it against the oscilloscope and using the um, FFT. So it'll be interesting to see where we get to here. So we're now on coming up to five watts. We're on five watts now. This is the 10 watt line in the middle here. And we are at 0.05. Now we're coming up to 17 watts, 19 watts, 20 watts, 21 watts, 25 watts. Whoa. All right. Well, we managed to get then. Let's just, we look at it to the 0.1%, 0.1%. That's 26 watts, that's more than what we said we we're going to be having. And if we look at where it gets to 20 watts, uh, which is what it's really rated for, we're at 0 0.06. But still, even here, it still does pretty well until we get to there. I'm not even really looking at this, we're just going, you know, we just put that, uh, that thing in there. So it does pretty good, it does pretty good. All right, so let's, uh, let's get rid of that for the minute. Uh, what does this thing sound like? Well, I can only give you the sound out of a, a speaker, which starts, at, I think it's like 72 hertz. So it's response, it's not very good at all, but I can tell you, I mean, it's gonna sound clear. It's gonna sound um, decent, as you, as you can see. But I'll just put that back for a second, a bit premature there. As we can see across the frequency response, we can see that, you know, from the low level, from those 20 hertz, even down here, 14 hertz, and we're running it from 10 hertz here. There's not a great deal of change. 25.56 um, dB to 27. Uh, so one and a half dB difference between here and here. Uh, it does use a bit more power there, of course. But if you were running this from a if you know, if you're going to set yourself up with a little bench uh, or desktop amplifier, one of these would be ideal. Little D-class thing, uh, ideal to make sure you get good enough heat sink. That's warm. It's not terribly hot, or anything. You can leave your hand on that. That dummy load's going to be a lot hotter. But um, yeah, this would work all right. Two of these uh, set up like this. Personally, I would get rid of the caps that are on here. I'd get rid of the little uh, ceramic things that are down here. Don't like ceramic caps on these things. I prefer to have films on there. Get rid of these, put something decent on because uh, these are just Chong X, um, which you know you can buy like bags and bags of them for a dollar. So they're as cheap as you like caps, and these are uh, tanted on things. And bleh, no. But I've got another one of these boards. I'm going to build it up. I'm going to put some film capacitors in and some better um, electrolytics, and we'll see how it does with that. Don't expect to see much difference, but I expect for sound quality, there might be something there. And we'll be able to do a comparison sort of 
um, you know, the best mic I've got for picking up stuff is this Rode one that I'm wearing, and that's what we can try and use and just see what that's like. But this video's got too long, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I will uh, catch you in the next one.